Welcome to Unnamed Podcast, coming to you deep from the heart of Powell, Ohio, somewhere in a bunker. That's kind of our intro. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we don't, we haven't <laughs> we, come up with anything. It's good. It's communication theory. Right. It's fine. My name is um, Kid Awful. This is my <laughs> co-host, Biff Walkus. How's it going? How are you doing today, Biff? I'm doing good. How are you doing today, Billy? Doing fine, doing fine. In case this is our first episode... Uh, I'm actually Billy, and that's Brad. Hi. <laughs> um, so, how's your week been? Week's been good. Week's I don't have good. a job still, so every day is like Sunday. And today uh, is Sunday. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> if we weren't opening on Kesha, I think that, that would be a good thing. Every day is like Sunday. If you can sing it as bad as that, yeah. then maybe we can just use you singing it. Okay. With in its entirety without paying we did that with angel of the morning last time so yeah (laughs) (laughs) um so we uh we have a great show for you today yes uh we are going to be talking about women's issues we have uh, an excellent guest um which we will be introducing pretty soon um their name is liz um they'll do their own intro they have a bunch of stuff to plug they're gonna do an awesome job um so and uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, the Beckenridge Brewery's Ophelia Hoppy Wheat today, so that'll be exciting. Uh, so Liz, do you want to do later. your intro real quick yeah, yeah, yeah. before Go we ahead get into everything and... else? Hey there, folks. My name is Liz. I am a gender queer person here to talk about uh, some women issue, women's issues. I think they probably only dragged me here not because I'm a friend, but because <laughs> I work at a rape crisis center in Central Ohio. Actually, honestly, before we even, like, before the Kesha thing even came down, I did, we decided we wanted to talk about that this week. Oh. Uh, we were like, we want Liz to be the first guest on because of the two episodes you did of the Bathroom Podcast back in the day when I, I was recording that. I don't even remember that. what we were talking about. Well, um, I was like, we're going to get Liz in first thing because Liz is very educated and can talk endlessly. So uh, <laughs> I think that Liz would be perfect. To yes, have Liz, is, Liz is very knowledgeable, very Smart studious. and can run their mouth. Right. And just can talk about talk about anything and, and connect it correctly to other things. So that's good. Oh, well, thank you, Billy. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, uh, we, as mentioned before, have yet to come up with a name Mm. for the podcast, um, but I've made a list. Brad, do you have anything? Did you come up with anything? I I came up with one in all of five days since the last time we (laughs) recorded the last podcast. (laughs) Um, I was hanging out with my boyfriend yesterday, and he's a musician. He's going to help us to record the, uh, the theme song when we finally get around to doing that for this podcast. And, uh, since it doesn't have a name, he just has been walking around calling it, Hey, so what do you want to do for the podcast show? So uh, we've just actually, been calling it the podcast the show. The podcast show is nice. I'm sure it's already taken. <laughs> Probably. That was my thought too. <laughs> All right. Um, I actually have a list I've been brainstorming. Word. So I'm going to I'm gonna read some of these off to you and okay. uh, maybe we can make we a can decision discuss. today. We yes. can discuss it. All right. It's written down so, on paper um, and everything. I know. Yeah. So these are these are the ones I've come up with. Um, Billy and Brad's Decent Podcast. Okay. Pod b and I like that. The mm-hmm. Sloshed Cast. The Basement Podcast. Calling back. Calling back, calling back to the bathroom, bathroom yeah. podcast back in the uh, day. A Fireside Chat with Brad and Billy. Ooh. Ask BB. Ask Brad B. Dear <laughs> Bitches with a Z. <laughs> uh, the Bunker Cast with former President William Howard Taft and D-Bag Steve. <laughs> um, Brad and Billy, International Men of Mystery. Brad's World. Brad and Billy, Love Gurus. Shrek. Brad and Billy, the spies who shagged me. Um, 30 minutes to an hour and a half of bullshit. Okay. Bees! Bees! Um, Swimming and Bitches, the home podcast experience. Oh my god. Uh, The Midwest, Super Brad. (laughs) Um, Balthazar. Um, No refunds. Uh, A funny thing happened on the way to the clitoris. Oh. (laughs) And Beers and Jeers. (laughs) <laughs> i like a lot of those actually um i at first i thought that the midwest and super brad were the same thing <laughs> Me? The, midwest the midwest super brad, brad. and that oh, actually God. is my oh. favorite one <laughs> um so what do you think audience uh by the time you listen to this we'll already have decided but you but can you yell can, at us yeah yeah whatever. you can yell at us on twitter and tell us that we chose wrong right um and that would be great please yell at us um <laughs> 
But I, I kind of want to jump right in today because we've got a lot to talk about. Well, let's about. talk about the beer first. Let's talk about Since the beer first. So Liz has already drank open. most of their beer. <laughs> so we've got uh, the Affilia Hoppy Wheat. Since we're talking about women's issues today, I thought that that might be a... Could I, could I use your thing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a, a relevant thing to drink. Ophelia, of course, from... Um, Hamlet. Hamlet. Mm-hmm. Um, drowning herself because all the shit with the men in her life went yeah, so wrong. Yeah, those men. <laughs> Uh, so cheers on that. So uh, let's have a sip here. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. I like this. This uh, is a definite improvement on last week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should never drink. You should never drink four strings. Uh, well, you know, and we explained this on the podcast, but since you weren't there and the first podcast isn't out yet, um, we stopped at the gas station mm. and this, the, the things were limited. I wanted to get a local beer it was that or columbus ipa and i know everybody has already had columbus ipa people outside of columbus have had that ipa right yeah so uh you know i think um i think it's appropriate because again like i want to kind of get beers that go with the theme of whatever our Mm -hmm. podcast is um so last week we talked about random bullshit, so of course we had a bullshit, bullshit beer. Bullshit beer, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, four string is gonna kill us. <laughs> 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 no, but this is good. It's very orangey. Uh, I'm gonna add to the list as um, possible podcast names. Just fuck four string. Fuck four string. <laughs> <laughs> um, that just writing me. that down now. Uh, Liz, <laughs> you've been drinking this the longest. What uh, What are your first impressions of uh, the f- Ophelia Hoppy Wheat? Um, so it's got a strong hop note at the beginning and follows up with the the wheat flavoring, which is it's interesting that it's that's mixing both. Um, I'm not a big fan of overly hopped beers, but I can appreciate one because the finish is not um killing me with bitterness. Uh, that's exactly the same for me, actually. That's yeah. exactly what I was gonna say. Um, I don't know if they are trying to make an orangey thing happen here. They don't say that specifically, but those kind of look like orange flowers on the front. Oh yeah, I can I can see that. Um, it tastes kind of orangey to me. Wheat ale typically often has orange. Yeah, citrus stuff going on. Right. But it's good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, Breckenridge. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Breckenridge. Thank a you, fine Colorado. Colorado ale. A fine Colorado ale. Um, Liz not only knows a ton about queer theory and feminism, but also has way more, um, way more p- beer drinking vocabulary than other, either Brad nor I. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's easy to bullshit, guys. It's not that much more than you all. Copy notes. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, in the last, finish. the last beer review podcast that I did, um, before this one, mm-hmm. uh, two guys in a six pack, for those of you who won't be able to find, find it because it was never released, <laughs> um, the whole, the whole point of the podcast was we would review six beers in a podcast in one hour um and the joke was we didn't know how to talk about beer so we just had to make up words uh-huh. um so yeah uh, that was fun. <laughs> uh and i'm going to continue that traditions here yes on, you could really um, taste the squibbles in this on one. possibly dear bradby dear bradby <laughs> so um let's see here out of um out of five drowned women <laughs> what do you give it i give it four out of five drowned women four out of five drowned women liz uh four out of five drowned women indeed uh yeah i'd give it i'd give it a four out of five drowned women i might even go like four and a half drowned women out oh of five. Uh, wow. yeah, yeah, right. uh He's so yeah very us. good <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> uh so the ophelia hoppy wheat four and a half drowned women out of five it's good so. yeah Bottoms up, Yay! ladies and gentlemen, listeners at home. Uh, all right, so um, in the news this week, we have a couple of things. Uh, one, like the biggest thing that we're going to talk about is the the Kesha trial yeah. that happened, which um, I think we can all agree, total bullshit. Total bullshit. Um, mm-hmm. If we can fit it in, we might want to talk about Kasich defunding Planned Parenthood in yeah. Ohio, because that's a, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, so, Brad, you've been reading up on this. What's the what's the backstory to uh, the whole Kesha trial? Right well, I'm now? following um, this since the beginning because um, I'm actually a big fan of Kesha. Uh, I have to throw that out because like um, this is only the second podcast, and I don't know people are gonna be um, <laughs> listening to this maybe who don't know me very well. But I'm actually like a pretty knowledgeable person when it comes to the, like. The music but, world. The music world, yeah. Um, and I know that when I say, oh, I love Kesha, that kind of can come off as like, oh, okay, well, whatever, he listens to pop music, oh, gay. Um, 
But, like, Kesha, I think, is really brilliant. Yeah. She's, like, a really smart person, for one. Like, she has a bachelor's degree in mathematics. I think, I she think when I... Uh, she attended yeah. MIT. Yes. Uh, I think, I think when I came home, we agreed that Kesha is the greatest pop star of our time. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, one of. Definitely way up there. Uh... It, I, I I always say that she's the greatest parody artist I, I believe ever that, yeah. there was because nobody knew forever <laughs> that she was just kind of making fun of pop music. And it's funny because like when she first came out, I was not really digging her necessarily. You but didn't I was know that she was making fun of it though. No, I didn't. And suddenly um, it makes it better. Yeah, which, you know it's pastiche. Ab- absolutely. And I always used to call her like the bargain brand Lady Gaga because Lady Gaga had just kind of like <laughs> yeah. just came out and was like a big thing. Um, and I was like, she's just like, if she's like Lady Gaga, the day after the party. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I find, I find that Kesha kind of holds up a little better than Lady Gaga. I don't know what it is. I mean, I have a lot of opinions about Lady Gaga yeah. and we can save that for another show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do want to throw out here that, uh, <laughs> since we're on the subject of Lady Gaga and as it pertains to this Kesha situation, I think that, um, Kesha was poised for a really great comeback after Mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, And it's probably not going to happen now. Not as quickly as we thought it would anyway. But um, I think that Lady Gaga might be having her comeback. Yeah, no, she's she's established herself as something else, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. And she's definitely been the most vocal. I've been, like, kind of following who's Mm -hmm. talking about this. And a lot of actual other lady pop stars are have a lot to say about yeah. this situation. Not just the little indie ones. And not just the little indie ones. It's a lot of major label contract holding celebrities. And uh, Lady Gaga has by far been the most vocal yeah. about this is bullshit, this is stupid, yeah. and this has happened to everyone. So so we've talked we've talked about um who thinks it's bullshit, but what's the actual story? So what happened for those for those who don't know? Kesha was um she signed a six contract deal with Sony Records and um she has released three. Part of her contract is that she has to work with this producer, Dr. Luke, who's made all of her records and a lot of hits for her and a lot of other pop musicians. Um, but uh, the allegation is that he uh, sexually assaulted her and threatened to kill her dog and among other things. But those were her, those are the two that the, the, especially the sexual assault thing mm-hmm. that keep coming back up and that's the whole reason why she's tried to sue sony and sue him to get out of this contract so that she can record with someone else um and i think she really just wants out of her record deal entirely because sony has not had her back at all obviously um what uh came down the other day is that uh the judge ruled that basically they weren't going to terminate her contract and uh yeah, basically that was it. They weren't going to terminate her contract, and she has to continue to record with Dr. Luke or not record at all. And that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, so, Liz, I think uh, let's go big and maybe maybe go go small later. Like, okay. do you think do you think this is symptomatic of a larger problem outside of Kesha? So this is absolutely symptomatic of a, a larger issue in society. Um, the fact that this is getting noticed at all, and for a long time it wasn't, it's all of a sudden mm-hmm. blowing up recently just with this court case coming to a head. Um, but most survivors never get believed enough to have their story told. Um, the fact that we use the language of allegations as opposed to, you know, this is what, what happened um, mm-hmm. is indicative of the problem here. Um, she is a, a woman with uh, with some race privilege and class privilege and still couldn't succeed in this system where she tried to get justice over being over being raped and she wasn't even going after him on that she was trying to get out of her contract to work with uh, her assailant i think that's a big part of this too is to, to understand she's not saying throw this dude in jail he raped me she's just trying to say hey do i can i just not work with him yeah 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 like i know like and again we all agree this this ruling's total bullshit totally. but i understand um I understand that Sony offered to allow her to work with a different producer. But within Sony? But within within Sony, Sony, yeah. Yeah. Um, So I, like, I know why that's bad, but could you explain it? Because I think that you can explain it better, Liz. (laughs) Okay, well, so clearly, um, 
the statements that have been put out by the lawyers representing Sony, it's already clear that they're out for Kesha, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They have no interest in supporting her or believing her um, or trying to make this easier for her and just putting her with a different, a different person. They probably weren't going to give her um, a great deal of help with her moving forward in her career. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's a wash for her. And so it was, it was, you know, I can't speak for Kesha, but it sounds like it was clearly more valuable to her to try to go forward to see if she could completely be removed from Sony. Yeah. Um, because the organization has chosen to ignore that this has been happening, mm-hmm. has actively chosen to ignore these allegations and to, um, to not release her. So, yeah, so wait, the question was, was this, is this, what, what, what like, is the... Why is, um, why is Sony uh, offering to allow her to work with a different producer not enough? She's... Um, she's speaking out against an organization that has been aware of this yeah. happening mm-hmm. and still allowed it to happen. And for them to just say, well, how about you work with us, but with someone else unacceptable, if they'd given a different response, that might've been an acceptable thing, but that would have needed to have happened a long time ago. Right. How long, yeah. how long have you been keeping tabs on this Kesha business? Uh, she well, was starting this court, pro- court proceeding like six months ago. I yeah. Believe. I mean, uh, I kind of started to hear rumblings about this after her last album dropped, which mm-hmm. didn't get a lot of, uh, didn't get a lot of promotion from Sony. Either. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was like one single, maybe two. Yeah. Um, so I think that there's been this has been an issue that's been known to Sony for a long time, even if it has not been publicly yeah. hashed out for and as it's, long. It's completely absurd that this guy isn't fired. Right. Especially since Kesha's mm-hmm. their talent. Like right. Kesha's the person who sells albums. Like nobody like... Nobody's gonna buy Dr. Luke's solo album. <laughs> what? <laughs> But we don't support rapists in this culture. We we support perps. And inherently in that message, what this comes down to is, and we never want to phrase it this way, but if we say like, well, if she hadn't been doing drugs, if she hadn't been drinking, if she hadn't done this, yeah. if she hadn't been promiscuous and singing about these things, they were pastiche guys. But regardless, well, she shouldn't have gotten herself raped. And that's the inherent message for most, for most, if not all, survivors of sexual assault um, and survivors of any kind of abuse of this nature. Um, we're in a culture that supports the perpetrator. Yeah. And, and this the, is very indicative of that. And the frustrating thing is there's so much legal legal precedent for it. Yeah. Like, that's that's <clears throat> how you get off for rape. You say, well, she was drinking, she was wearing provocative underwear. I mean, like, but all that's that nothing new. Yeah, no, no the that's precedent what I'm was there like, before. The, yeah, that, I like, mean, that precedent was already established long, long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. So, it's I, time for a change, right? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to fix. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. I think a lot of education is helpful. So part of some of the stuff my, my organization does is they try to believe that it's possible to actually change this culture. And they're funded to, to do work. And this isn't my field. Um, I work directly with survivors of assault. But I've got a coworker who does education. And she's sent into high schools and middle schools to talk to kids about what a healthy relationship looks like. Right. So they're mm-hmm. there. And she's funded by the CDC because they see rape culture as a disease. And they're like, let's eradicate it the same way we eradicate other diseases. It starts with education. That's brilliant. That's, that's awesome. Which is beautiful. And it yeah. blows my mind and it like makes me want to cry happy tears. <laughs> um, and and Sue, who's the person who does this, and I will like cry happy tears over this. Um, yeah, no. So like, I think education is important. I think it's important to understand. So like, we're big on using this language of allegations of rape. You have a higher chance of winning the lottery, which, uh, you know, if you're at all knowledgeable, you know it's damn slim to win the lottery right. you have a higher chance of winning six hundred thousand dollars or more in the lottery um than being accused falsely of rape wow wow i think you're more likely to be drowning and struck by lightning in the same moment yeah. <laughs> than be accused of rape Statist- uh, accused of rape falsely statistically and and yet mras like think that that's a huge issue the culture thinks that it's a huge issue yeah. it's not just i think men's rights activists are putting voice to some ugly parts of our culture that we don't want to admit that exists. Um, I will admit that thoroughly exists. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think something something that's interesting is like how often and how loudly <laughs> false allegations of rape are reported. Mm-hmm. Like they making re- it, they get reported. Um, so they're a tiny percent of the. So first of all, only a tiny percent, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, guys, um, of of rapes that occur at all get reported um from there a very very fair a few like tiny tiny amount um turns out to be false 
And again, the, the stats on what the likelihood is that, that the, the allegation is false is incredibly unlikely. We're in a culture that doesn't understand consent. So, Ab- Absolutely. Uh, so let's, I mean, we might as well make this educational. Like, what's the, what's the language of consent? Like, what, what counts as consent? Okay, so um, people think of this as a, well, I have to get a no for this not to be a thing. Um, but consent, like, we all know that sex looks different than, than that. I talk a lot with my partners mm-hmm. as and during and after. Um, but there's nonverbal cues too. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want to be doing something to someone and they're looking unsure. Mm -hmm. They're looking uncomfortable. That's time to check in. So consent is a continuing thing. It's a hygiene model, right? So like, you know, you can still have pretty good teeth and you can forget to brush your teeth one morning. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but you're real gross if you forget it every day. Right. Um, you know, you recognize, oh man, I forgot to brush my teeth today. I'm going to grab a toothbrush over lunch and clean my teeth, Mm. right? I'm going to make sure that I make up for this, you know, and, and engage in, um, active conversations with my partner. I'm going to be checking with their body language to make sure that this is feeling good. I'm going to be communicating what feels good to me with body language, uh, with verbal cues, um, so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, that's awesome that we now have that out there on in a recorded forum. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let's change gears for a little bit. Okay. Brad, what, um, like, not being able to release an album right now, what does that do for Kesha's career? Like, uh, why is that so important? She's pretty sunk at this point. Um, I think that, like, the silver lining for this situation is that it got her, uh, it got people taking her seriously a little more than they probably would have prior yeah uh and it got people kind of really rooting for her so this she was really poised to have a great comeback potentially uh with a successful case with a successful case Mm -hmm. uh and i mean she may yet still but uh right now she cannot record under her own own name um so if you don't know kesha is actually her like legitimate first name legally by the government she can't record under that name she would have to record under something else entirely probably with different people uh on a different uh record label uh either that or she goes back to recording with sony and with dr luke and we all know how that's going to end up because sony is not sony has not supported her at all so far so why would they why would they support any work she does from here on right so pretty much what she has to look forward through is to is recording three albums that are not going to get any a radio airplay or any like she's they're not going to send her to like late night talk shows or Mm -hmm. mtv or vh1 um she's so she's gonna basically waste her time recording Mm -hmm. three albums with her rapist and that's gonna be the end of it um so I don't really know. I don't know what's going to happen with this situation. It it all sounds very. And then our audio cut out. Hi, right, Billy from the future here. For those of you wondering, he was about to say bad. Anyway, I figure now is as good a time as any to throw in some stuff you need to know. We come in on the We Are Temporary mix of Die Young. Uh, we went with this track because We Are Temporary cut out every Dr. Luke contribution What's left is, at times, distorted, ghostly, and even unsettling. But at other times, it's almost anthemic. Like the marching theme to some youthful revolution headed to a club instead of war. If you want to check that out, it's freely available on SoundCloud. We'll throw a link in the description. In a few moments, you might want to know that Van Morrison did record 31 improvised songs, literally called the Contractual Obligation Session, with such amazing hits as Ringworm, The Big Royalty Check, Blow in Your Nose, Nose in Your Blow, and Want a Danish, about wanting a Danish. The Lou Reed album Brad is about to talk about is called Metal Machine Music, and the proto-partridge family's name is The Cowsills. The story I'm about to tell about them is apparently completely false. Normally I'd put all this after the podcast, but at the end of the recording we play Amazing Grace, released by Kesha on YouTube, and I really wanted to linger on that note. Public domain music is the only kind she can put out right now. If you haven't watched it yet, I'll put a link in the description for that too. Go play it about 78 times. 
All right, that's all I need to put in here. Uh, I now return you to your regularly scheduled program already in progress. Take two. It all sounds very bad. <laughs> all right, so I don't know. As as far as m my thoughts on this, and Kesha, I would never tell you what to do. That is not my role is to tell you what to do with anything. Be because she's a listener. <laughs> because she's a listener. And, you know, just in case she's a listener, um, your choice matters to me. So my thoughts on this, because I don't think you're a listener, though, is that I would really like to see you do three protest EPs, like short little 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 guys. Um, and if they're not going to go anywhere, you might as well just well, have some fun with it. I, I'll, um, I'm not sure if this is the correct artist. If it's not, then I'll just say something in footnotes about who it actually was. But mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Van Morrison, mm -hmm. who um, just, like, to get out of his contract with his label, recorded the worst songs yeah. he could possibly record. Just, like... Are they called when classics it, now? I don't no. think so. No. Like, uh, in a way, but not really. <laughs> yeah, like, they did get released, but basically put out what he thought was just completely unprintable. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Another one was Lou Reed did an entire album of nothing but, like, just feedback and noise um, to get out of a record label contract. The thing about that is, is both those dudes... Uh, that would, both of those happened in the 70s i'm pretty sure yeah um and i don't, and i'm pretty sure that she's going to have to do legit she's music she's going to have to do legit anywhere. music that's not going to go anywhere yeah um or the other option she has is to do what prince did when he was trying to get out of his when he was suing his record label is uh he started recording as the artist formerly known as prince yeah which is not he was not that... the title that he was listed in under his record label so it was legal yeah he was that heart shape over like a weird it was like an onk yeah. or something yeah um, uh, which was awesome yeah well, like, I didn't understand it at the time like I just thought it was bullshit because like, I was a kid and like didn't understand yeah. right but like like as an adult that's like a totally ballsy move absolutely and she kind of has already started doing that uh, she's I don't know if she's recording but she's performing with a band and I wish I could remember the name of the band but uh, she's recording music or well performing music with a band right now which i think is what she's the, her only creative outlet that she can really do because she she can't be kesha even though she's kesha <laughs> you know i think uh i think what was really clever about the prince thing mm -hmm. is uh the fact that he did change his name to an unpronounceable symbol mm -hmm. so the only thing that they could say was the artist was formerly, formerly known, known as prince, prince therefore still getting his name out mm -hmm. there that was really effing genius absolutely unfortunately the precedent has been set and i'm sure sony's mm -hmm. thought about all the options mm -hmm. kesha's gonna try to yeah. do to get around this right and is going to find ways to block her yeah mm -hmm. because these men managed to get away with it when they were trying to get out of their labels and i'm glad they got out but i i am a little pessimistic and i don't yeah. want to be i mean i personally am not a big fan of major record labels because this shit this is not new yeah. shit like this has been happening f literally forever forever like um i think um i think it was like the partridge family like the people who are originally supposed to play the partridge family it was an actual band mm -hmm. they like signed their name like they were gonna make a tv show out of them and then at the last minute, the record label slash um, TV producer said, fuck it, we're going to get a bunch of actors to do it oh, instead. Wow. Um, so this entire family that was also a band just couldn't perform. Couldn't perform under their names. Oh, my wow. God. And this was back in the 60s. Um, so, yeah, record labels will, like, eat your soul. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's what they're there to do. And I'm not telling anybody what to do, but you shouldn't buy Sony's products. And really, honestly, I don't think that you should really buy anything that isn't going to directly help an artist. <laughs> well how do you do that so what's the best the, things what are the best things to buy the best things to do are support an artist who is on tour one first and foremost if you like somebody's music go see them live uh and buy merch uh always buy merch for the bands you like do they get higher they get more like a higher percent that's yeah. what they make most of their money on yeah oh my uh it, especially merch uh so you're telling us we don't even have to worry about buying their, their music. Legally. I mean, they do get paid to yeah. a, a small sliver of a portion. Yeah. As uh, All right. So as an artist, I, I do want to encourage people to buy the music <laughs> legally. And here's why. Record labels are bullshit and terrible. Mm -hmm. But 
art needs to have value and can needs to continue to have value um or else like people stop paying for anything like basically like it's it's kind of like a weird thing um and something that i've personally run into a lot where people are like, oh, well, can you do this for me for exposure? Can you do this for me for free? Oh, mm-hmm. for exposure. Yeah. For exposure. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, if you like something, pay for it. You vote with your dollars. Like, you vote what gets funded, what gets paid for. And, like, buying the music is only a small part of it. But it is an important part of it, in my opinion. Um, I guess I'm just asking. So for those of us who have limited resources, or maybe we don't even buy music, maybe we're using streaming ser- services, mm. what's the best way to, to get money to our favorite artists? I, I would still say just buy their merch yeah. and see them on tour. Especially if you're going to see them on tour, that's like selling out concerts is like good for an artist for the most part just because mm-hmm. it makes the labels yeah. pay attention to them. They'll right. get more money to make their next album if their tour <laughs> is successful. And their last album is successful. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. As an artist, I still kind of am like... As an artist myself, I should say. uh, (laughs) I really feel like if you want to make art, you should do it regardless of whether or not you're getting paid. Um, So that's just me. And I kind of just want the music industry to crash on burn and just cease to exist so that, like, real musicians can continue to make music. Because the internet exists now and you can always find new music. Yeah, I think I think maybe again, like point counterpoint, like I'm a huge fan of buying like buying the art as art. Uh-huh. Um like maybe maybe the best thing to do, and this is me spitballing, is to like pay for the streaming view service, like like the Netflix of music, whatever it is that you use, be it Spotify or Apple Spotify, <laughs> um, or Google Spotify. Um Or God forbid title. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, even support Kanye. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, title, I think actually, since we're kind of on the subject anyway, yeah. is a great idea. The thing of it is, it's, it's just, it only supports the 1% of the music industry, really. It's yeah. like, it's Taylor Swift, Kanye West, Jay Z, and Jack White. <laughs> <laughs> These people don't really need your money. Uh, yeah, but I say, um, pay for the streaming service and then, like, Go like go see them in concert and buy the merch. Absolutely. Like this like if you have a music habit, like if you're like like this is gonna be way cheaper than buying two or three albums a month. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I used to do before streaming services were a thing. But after I stopped like kazaing my music, <laughs> <laughs> uh like a, like your average music streaming service is seven to ten dollars a month. Yeah. Um, um which is way cheaper than buying albums. Uh, so yeah, that's my two cents. I also like records, like used records. They're so nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah. like a bad gay, so I bought a share uh, record that was on sale Goodwill last week. I love share. It's in my car right now. Oh, nice. I just got the very best of share the other day. <laughs> my uh, my Simon and Garfunkel album is sitting over there on the mantle. Nice. So that's that's exciting. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. probably the most sane candidate for president Seriously. on the Republican side with George or Jeb Bush. Yeah, coming up close behind. Like, I'm gonna yell at you guys what, in a second, but yeah, keep going. Like, in what? Like, in what world? first of all like since we're talking about politics really fast and would i like would we ever be saying on at least one side of the spectrum like the like john Kasich and somebody whose name is bush is the most sane <laughs> right like person you, on that side don't you miss the days when they were the really crazy ones you were afraid of remember absolutely yeah because they're <laughs> yes. the same level as romney and we really hated romney and his binder full of women right yeah. um th- so oh so I've been talking about this for the last seven months with my neighbor, who's really good at calling things early politically. Okay. Um, and he calls things that people have been just scoffing at him for months, and he's like, no, you watch. Um, not even. I think it was like nine months ago we were talking about Kasich. Mm-hmm. And he predicted, A, Bernie surging ahead, mm-hmm. and B, he predicted Kasich. And he's like, I feel good about Bernie, but I'm real scared about Kasich. And he's been playing this careful game since he re- reelected as governor in this last round. Um, to pretend to be a moderate. <laughs> we all know yeah. that now. So, like the tiny percent of liberals in Ohio <laughs> know that Kasich is, is not, not a moderate. moderate. Yeah. yeah, we're the only ones who effing know. I know. Yeah. Am I allowed to curse? Because this might happen. I curse on this, so yeah. I, I encourage anyone else who needs to. <laughs> um, um, Kasich is ridiculous. 
he has done more harm for women's health things in the state of Ohio um, than the last few governors we've had. Um, and he blatantly lies about it. He had advertisements um, for his second uh, round of trying to be uh, successfully um, being elected to governor of Ohio, um, where he said, I expanded. He just flat out lied in an advertisement and no one called him on it. I expanded health care options to women. No, you created gag orders. You reduced funding. You made it harder to get abortions in the state and you closed down um, so many of our clinics. Uh, it's just, it's, it's stunning and it's not just women's health issues, but like he's working really hard to play this, this moderate person. And I think he's going to jump ahead and everyone is finally not calling me crazy for this. Yeah. I think he's the candidate to be worried about. I, are you sure? Like, still? I'm still sure. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I kind of agree with, um, Liz. Like, I don't know. Like, I kind of sadly want him to jump ahead because that's at least better than it. I actually know. Like, I mean, if you're playing politics, if. Like, Trump, like, runs all the way through, then he's not going to get elected as president. Which is great. <laughs> Which is great. Like, Kasich could legitimately get elected. Like, all he has to do is, like, play play the long con. Keep like, pretending keep, to be a moderate. Keep pretending to be a moderate. Make it through, like, the, the caucuses. Um, and then, well, like, call the Bernie Sanders a socialist, which a lot of baby boomers are still terrified of <laughs> because they think it's communism. Mm-hmm. Um... And, um, keep doing just what he's doing. Yeah, keep doing just what he's doing, or you know, like keep using... like say any any of a billion things that like people have been saying about Hillary Clinton, true or not. Um, and and keep using Ohio taxpayer dollars to pay mm-hmm. for your Secret Service while you're on the campaign, right. which is illegal by um, Ohio laws. And we have tried to call him on that, and he still has not done a thing about it. Um. um but I kind of I kind of want to bring this back around to this defunding of Planned Parenthood thing yeah. because uh, like we're I'm not gonna endorse a, a presidential candidate as a podcast yet. Like I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. It's Bernie. Let's be real. Like, we're very liberal. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, Bernie can have beer with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ooh, I would love to have Bernie. I would, on yeah, podcast. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, maybe. Goals. Goals, right? <laughs> Podcast uh, goals, Bernie Sanders. But I want to I talk about this defunding Planned Parenthood thing, uh, because it seems to be kind, seems to be a kind of fad in um, conservative politics right now is to defund Planned Parenthood, um, to score quick political points with anti-abortionists, because it's something easy that you can do yeah. that um, hurts a lot of people. Uh, but doesn't take a lot of effort, and you don't have to go up against Supreme Court decisions well, or anything like and that. And there's no political consequences, because technically they, there there have been some states who successfully made abortion illegal mm-hmm. in their state. And honestly, they're just playing a game. They'll be like, well, for a few years, this is going to suck for women. Um, so here's the thing, is the political, co- political consequences of this are slim. Planned Parenthood... Um, not just abortions, but all the other health um, services that they offer primarily serve um, the lowest class people Mm -hmm. in the hardest hit neighborhoods, right? The people who don't have voices, um, except for the the couple of politicians who maybe came from from that part of town who are speaking out and are doing beautiful things trying to get noticed um, by the Republican majority in Ohio and in other states. Um, But it's easy for them to get these political points and it's at the cost of um, health of women and, uh, I'm going to say, also trans people. Absolutely. Yeah, um, which is an undernoted um, uh, group that also gets served by Planned Parenthood. Uh, it's it's disgusting, um, and it's not new. So we are noticing the trend right now, and they've had huge political points that they're gaining from any attack on Planned Parenthood since that overly edited video Um that out of context, it, we all know about the the tissue. Yeah, the mm. tissue. I, I mean, for those who don't know, there was a video that was put out by a, a quote unquote documentarian uh, who basically entrapped like people into like in a like if you edit it out of context, saying that they sell baby parts, uh, <laughs> which uh, was ruled in co- court to be um, complete bullshit. As they say in legal terms. And actually so much so that the people who put out the video um, are now being uh, tried on criminal charges. Turns out you can't lie on a stand about about something that you edited, you know, and put on YouTube. 
G. Um, G. <laughs> what? And I can't repeat those sentiments in a courtroom? Um, it's incredible. And so, like, the tax on women, I'm glad that it's getting noticed now. And so, um, Billy, you made the comment that it seems like it's a trend right now. But the thing is, is that this has been a trend for the last five years. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say really throughout uh, pre-Obama's presidency. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen more legislation in the last so many years uh, on women's health and trying to reduce access to it than we've seen since Roe versus Wade. Wow. It's unprecedented wow. numbers of bills going through throughout the country and state and, and federal, like, uh, nationwide legislature uh, efforts to, to reduce women's access, to reduce uh, female bodies, people's, people's access to cancer screenings, to, to things they need for their general health, and to abortion, which, you know what? I'm just going to throw this out there. That's our fucking right. We're not arguing about this anymore, but we're the only country that has this right and we still argue about it. Right, yeah. It's gotten so bad, so there was a documentary that was shown at the Gateway uh, last fall called Vessel. Um, and it's uh, it was a woman who was a, a doctor from some Scandinavian country, I want to say Finland, who recognized that a lot of places in the world did not have access to um, even, even Plan B, right? oh, wow. much less other kinds of services. And so she found out a loophole for for um for women to access these things international waters you're allowed to get whatever kind of health procedures you want or need yeah and so she would show up to countries where it was illegal to get abortions illegal to have birth control and have women aboard her ship and had health clinics and doctors on hand take them out to international waters they'll make <laughs> sure with the gps that they're where they're supposed to be and i'll give and like distribute um plan b pills wow right? uh, it's gotten so bad that people in america are starting to ask her to come oh wow uh, first of all, I'd like to point out that, uh, Abortion Pirates sounds like possibly the greatest <laughs> show ever. Abortion Pirates starring uh, Billy possibly, and Brad. Possibly the greatest, um, possibly the greatest reality television show ever. It, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That would uh, be brilliant so, if the Learning Channel was still the Learning Channel. So, if you're, if you're a big TV exec <coughs> and, um, you're watching this program, and by watching I mean listening. Listening, you know. Uh... <laughs> I know that we just trash like major like entertainment company executives, <laughs> uh, but come on, guys, abortion pirates, let's make it happen. I can see some intersection. It's a great punk rock band name. Yeah, <laughs> with uh, with whale wars <laughs> on Animal Planet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be event television. <laughs> I can oh see this gosh. happening, guys. This could this could be the next DC's Legend of Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like just abortion pirates, what whale wars, whale wars. and um and uh, deadliest catch like all together <laughs> oh. in a team up. <laughs> <laughs> They trade places. Exactly. Like, and somehow I throw truckers. truckers. That was yeah. exactly oh, what I was gonna gosh. say. <laughs> 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 Ugh. Um, so, Liz, do you think, like, I wish I had the, the numbers in front of me because I've read this a lot. Public opinion on abortion is changing pretty quickly. What do is- you think, do you think that this is, like, kind of the last, um, the last throes of anti-abortion in America is just to lash out at whatever, <sighs> whatever is the lowest hanging fruit? If you- because that's, yeah. that's what you can do. There's a couple things at play here. Um, so we all, maybe we all don't know. Um, so the last set of small elections, right? So for getting, it wasn't a national election, um, for getting con- state Congress uh, people elected. Uh, we had very low voter t- turnout rate, very low young voter turnout rate. And that's typical, um, but also very upsetting. And I remember yelling at some of my friends, you know, incredibly educated people, activists who didn't vote. But the thing is, is that even with those rates, which tend to, like the narrative says, that's a Republican vote when that happens, when young people don't come out and uh, when there's low numbers, Yeah. right? But um, the truth is, is that things are gerrymandered so thoroughly throughout the country that millions of more people, if you just count the numbers, voted for Democrats mm-hmm. in this country in that low turnout election um, that swept and, and uh, Republicans swept and took over um, the House and Senate, Right. So um, on one level, they can get away with it because they're in power. Um, There's money in politics, right? So there's clearly some parties telling, you know, communicating with the politicians. This is a thing we want you to want you to do. Um, So I think it's these two pieces, pieces. If you asked me a few years ago, I would have thought I would have told you like, yeah, this is the last throws. We were having the war on women was the language being used a few years ago. 
Um, and I said, this is the last throw. It's like, the Republicans are ridiculous. We're going to quit voting for them. And we have, and they're still in power. Yeah. Because they, while they've been in power, they've gerrymandered the districts. Um, so until something's done about finance and campaigns mm-hmm. and something's done about the gerrymandering system, um, I don't, I can't tell you if this is going to be the end of it or not. Um, I really do wonder. I used to think that we were moving towards resolving this and i'm a little pessimistic because i'm surprised we're still having this conversation seriously yeah i mean i continue to be surprised but <laughs> nothing should surprise me anymore. <laughs> nothing should surprise I me i keep anymore. telling you you got to keep your expectations for people nice and low <laughs> like I'll, I'll admit i'm from um well some of my some of my friends when i lived in chicago used to call it the corn <laughs> um and growing up in the corn i'm not surprised we're still having this conversation um, yeah same here i'm not from the corn but i'm from the holler yeah it's it's their 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 neighbors really really <laughs> uh so i don't know like like i know it's a very divisive divisive issue um and it's bullshit. It is bullshit. We already decided this in the '60s, guys. Right? So, you no. Know, uh, and and no other. There's no precedent for other other countries who are a little bit more well behaved than us um, for continuing to fight it and trying to undo it. Right. But our Supreme Court has made a ruling. So why we keep arguing it, I don't know. Um, well, no, I do. I do. And it's that there's systems of oppression that continue to keep certain groups down. Yeah. And it's very effective in keeping groups down that don't vote for Republicans. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So like, I think, I think we're, we're at a good kind of stopping point on this conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'd like to do, um, here on, uh, here on the, the, uh, oops, it's fine. Here on Brad's world. Hey. Uh, we like to give back. We like to answer a few questions from the audience since we don't have an audience yet. Uh, we use, uh, we use a few different methods to, um, to figure out what the people want to know, what the people are asking right now. So, uh, Liz, as our guest, as our guest, I'm going to give you the choice. Uh, you can either we can either answer um, a couple of Dear Abby quest- questions, or we can do um, the Google autofill, where I type in um, "Should I become?" and then I'm going to use your first your first um, Letter of your name, so L, and then I'm gonna use Brad and I's first letter, so B. Can we do one of each? Yeah, we can do one of each. I don't want to decide. Okay, all right. I was gonna veto the Dear Abby, but if you want to do so, <laughs> can it be Dear Prudence? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, Dear Prudence. Yeah, uh, Dear we Prudence haven't call? we haven't uh, we haven't stolen Dear Prudence's question. Okay, so I don't know what Dear Prudence is. Yeah, is... why don't you explain Dear Prudence while I look up a Dear Prudence? I know question. that we have a new one, uh, and they hired her because the old Dear Prudence has retired okay and she had an interview on npr but it's a it's an advice column it's an advice column like dear abby except okay. dear prudence and it's hearkening from the beatles song, right and that's about all i know oh okay okay but i know that she's liberal like the current person so you know dear abby is actually pretty liberal too mm-hmm. um i actually just saw earlier today she some kind of somebody was talking about not inviting homosexual couples to their dinner party and abby so like fucking know. ripped them up Go Abby. Right. No, she always is. She's actually a really good proponent about things like that. Um, and I've known that forever. Um, but her, um, the people who write into her are very boring. And we tried to do that in the last podcast and I was not very impressed. Okay. So we're going to try it. We'll do, do a Dear Prudence first. And then we're going to do a Should I Become L? Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is this is the, the Dear Prudence that I found. It's got a good title. It's Dated Ghost. Okay. Uh, that's the name of the person. Uh, recently I went on a very promising first date with a guy, following which he practically fell off the face of the earth. Texts went unanswered and such. I did not text him excessively, but the fourth text or so it had become clear that I'd been ghosted. That I'd gone with a, that I'd gone on a date with the undead. (laughs) (laughs) This was disappointing because I generally thought we had chemistry. We laughed a lot and he even walked me home and kissed me at the door. Um, so I, I, I read this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and, and just put it out there. Mm. I, I've been guilty of this. I don't like confrontation. Yeah. Um, so I'm, um, I'm really just, just terrible. Billy is a ghost. Yeah. I'm, I'm an actual ghost. Can we, um, can we but, define ghosting? Yes. Define ghosting? Yeah. Ghosting is when you go on a date with someone. It presumably goes well, as far as you can tell. And then you never hear from them again. 
this is a lot harder to do now that people have Facebook. Mm-hmm. But if you're not Facebook friends with this person, like say you went on like an okay Cupid date, um, it's like they're they're not returning your calls or your texts or huh. they're just gone. Uh, it's like they never existed in the first place. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna expand this question because again I'm totally guilty of this because I don't like confrontation. Mm-hmm. I don't like to turn people down because I don't like being turned down. Mm-hmm. Um, so what? What can this person do? And what can somebody who doesn't like confrontation do and doesn't want to um doesn't want to reply? Okay, um <laughs> I okay. I don't like confrontation, but I'm incapable of leaving shit like this. Me so too. um I sometimes you just gotta suck it up, Billy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's like there's there. I don't think that there's a good non-confrontational way because you're always gonna feel a little bit guilty, a little bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been I've been I've been guilty of leaving like very brief responses. Yeah. Like like letting kind of not leaving them hanging, but also not giving them polite, a but yeah. not yeah engaged yes syllables yes not asking questions back Mm. and i think that it's not the best thing to do but it isn't a bad idea if you can't just say hey i think you're great but i don't want to be your significant other okay i'm gonna tie that back to what i was saying about consent culture i think this is this is relevant is to tell is to you can find kind ways to communicate with someone and i'm too stressed out by just leaving something Mm -hmm. hanging like that too so um, personally, I will have the hard conversation and be like, hey, listen, X, Y, Z, I don't think I'm feeling it, but it's really nice following your posts about cats on Facebook. Right. I want to keep doing that. So don't unfriend me if you feel good about that. You know, and there's, this is a, a dichotomy here thing. It's, it's different for uh, Billy than it is for you and I, because queer folks, queer folks uh, we, we have hand, to get along with, we our... have to get along with each other. Really. Even yeah. if we hate each other, we kind of, we're going to see each other. Because um, we all know each other. Because we all know each other. Um, and I think it's a lot easier for queer people to just be friends with people that they've had sex with or gone on dates with. or they're, it's. A, I think it's mm-hmm. easier for us to transfer that into a platonic relationship than it is for straight people. Because straight people have never been asked to do that. <laughs> We're dealing with such a small percent and we find each other. And so the community is very, very interwoven and very family um, it's part of why I'm glad I'm not working for an LGBT organization because right. then like I would have to not be friends with people um, in Columbus. So yeah, I think we're forced to get along. But yeah. that said too, I think that's tied in. So like I believe in enthusiastic consent when you're talking about someone really getting down. But I think that that kind of commu- level of communication exists everywhere in interactions. Okay. So um, for me, ethically, I feel gross about just doing the fade away. Like, oh, I'm yeah. not feeling it. Um, I have historically also done the thing where I gave sort of non-committal answers, um, but recently... I think everybody's guilty of that. Everyone's yeah. guilty. Like, we're all in the process of learning. Um, I recently made sure that I actively had a communication with someone and was real with somebody. Liz, you're very good at having the hard conversation, regardless of what it's about. <laughs> Um, and it was very uncomfortable, but I'm glad I did it. And I hope that person doesn't hate me. And I think that they actually don't. They thanked me for being honest. Yeah, and so. I, I do think that people appreciate when you're straightforward with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. like especially in this culture of Absolutely. text messaging. Like you can't just call somebody. Right. Because I, like I would the, really prefer that no one ever called me. Like honestly. the the 1990s version of of ghosting, <laughs> and like and by 1990s I mean from the 50s on is right. just don't pay not, them back. not calling them back. Right. Um, and it, like it was a very. Why didn't thing. he call me back? Yeah, oh. just like Brad's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, but the 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 thing is, like, we're so connected now. Mm-hmm. Like, like you mentioned Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I make it a point to never add somebody that I'm dating on Facebook and unless... until you're sure. Yeah, until I'm sure. No, yeah, me too. Um, because I'm not. I don't know. You just don't... I I think that it's just a valid to not want someone who may just be a casual part of your life to have intimate knowledge of your comings and goings. Yeah. I think that's valid. <laughs> um, again, you know, I have the privilege of dealing with a much larger community. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you have some safety in going. Because you don't have to take her to that Applebee's. You can go to another Applebee's. <laughs> With another person. With another yeah. person. And her best friend isn't going to see you no. there. Yeah. 
Like, I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't even know. Like, that's how much privilege I have. Is I just, I don't even understand. Uh, I think, I don't know. Personally, I think it's always important to admit that. Um. Oh, yeah, I'm drinking one of the shitty beers. You can have a sip if you want. <laughs> you can have a whole can if you want. Here. No, no. You don't want a whole can. No. I know you don't. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and answer our um, our dear Prudence uh, person though. What what should somebody being ghosted do? Um, I I mean I personally say like having been a ghoster, um, <laughs> don't having been it. having been a piece of shit uh, <laughs> uh, constantly. Uh, I say at like at some point. And, like, you just have to let it go. It Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But, you know, like, that person, like, somebody who's been a piece of shit but also has a lot of self-loathing loathing issues, honestly, that person's probably not worth your time. Right. <laughs> um, I have been ghosted many a time. Uh, and mm-hmm. I I don't know. I You just kind of got to suck it up. And I know that, that was my answer to practically every Dear Abby we did last time. Yeah. But, really, everyone could really... Um, benefit from sucking it up most of the time. Like, sometimes your outrage is justified, but most of the time, you kind of gotta stop putting energy into things that are not helping you, and this is one of those situations where... Yeah, I have to agree. Um, whether or not you have a ghost a, a ghost person, a ghoster? A ghoster, a ghost problem. A ghost problem, um, and your ghost didn't tell you that they're ghosting you. Right. Um... Unfortunately, you need to let it go. And uh, I love yourself, baby. Yeah, you know what? You've got cuter people you can go on dates with. Absolutely. So. You're probably straight, so I'm sure there's lots of them. <laughs> you can meet them in public without trying. You can find them in the library. The elevator. The elevator. Where else do straight people go? Uh, I don't know. Um, the deli. The deli. <laughs> they love meat. <laughs> In Whole Foods, <laughs> but really anywhere, anywhere. Uh, I don't know. I have I have a lot of questions about that, but we'll save that for another podcast. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our um, our Google question now. Lovely. Okay. Uh, so I added a there because nothing I was coming up with made grammatical sense. Okay. Uh, so our Google question is: Should I become a lawyer? No. No. Oh. I mean, unless like unless you want to. Like, yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of my answer to everything. Anytime <laughs> anybody asks me, should I do this? It's just, I always say, this is my answer, but do whatever you want. You do. <laughs> um, are we assuming that the readers are asking this? We're pretending because we don't have listeners yet. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, so I actually had a, a friend who she and her partner were both practicing lawyers. And um, as soon as it was looking like her partner was going to make it to partner level at her firm she quit her job and became a receptionist nice. at an lgbt organization well that's she, cool um fucking hated her job and she frequently she writes rather eloquently so she frequently blogs about why mm-hmm. you should never ever become a lawyer mm-hmm. so i think i am very much a type b personality so my instinct is to tell you even as someone who likes philosophy so i would mm-hmm. have been set up well for law um don't become a lawyer it's stressful. Find something else to do. It's ethically questionable. It is so ethically questionable. You are questionable. forced to do the ethically questionable things because you have to pay back those loans. you got to start there. Yeah. Uh, I have a cousin who's a lawyer, and he was like, he had to take some of the <laughs> shittiest, most terrible cases for <clears throat> forever. I don't know that he's yet <laughs> taking legit cases yet. But like, like ones that he feels proud of. Mm-hmm, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Aaron Brockovich is not the real story of, of law. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, no, not Nelson, everybody gets Nelson's to be Aaron and Murdoch's from uh, from Daredevil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, even though, like, they they got dragged through the shit. Like that right. was that was okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take a slightly different point of view. Okay. Um, and say uh, it depends on where you balance money and ethics in your life. Well, that's true. Like, if you want to be quote unquote successful in a traditional sense. Um, yeah, be a lawyer. Like, if you're fine yeah, working if you want to be born, be a lawyer. A week. If you're fine, even if you do have high moral standards, if you're fine compromising those for a while until you can get into a position where you can make a difference. So you can be RBG. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, like, maybe that's, maybe that's the, the, um, the thing for you. A lot of lawyers go on, like, a lot of former presidents have been lawyers. That's true. Like, w- all the way back since the beginning. Yeah. Almost um, all of them. 
Wasn't Nelson Mandela a lawyer? Yeah. Anyone with a political career in the Western world um, has been a lawyer. Okay. So, <laughs> like, or if a you're, business owner. If you're willing or a to, <laughs> if you're Not willing to pick, pick your battles. Um, if you want to affect change within the system, maybe it's not a bad idea. Slash, if you just want to be fucking rich, like, and you have no moral standards, that's fine. Definitely too. be a lawyer. If Definitely that's your be goal. a lawyer. And be okay that's... with those bills for the next mm-hmm. yeah. however many decades you're going to be. Yeah, paying yeah. Paying Stu- suit loans blows. That's that's going to be the another only way you're going to get to pay for it if you give yourself to the military. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they definitely want you to cover up shit for them. Yeah. yeah. Do you have another question? Uh, I uh, I don't. Do we want to do another question? Let's do one let's more. Do, let's do B. Should let's I become do, B? Should I become B? Uh, since since <clears throat> that is like ninety percent of the alliteration, right? Like like I went off of that. A should lot I become coming. a Brad and Billy? Should I become a B? A barber. I think definitely. Yeah. I'm actually considering that myself. Um, I like that. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, I've been cutting my boyfriend's hair, and that's a lot of fun for me. Um, What's the process? Barber I, versus, like, stylist, which probably is different training. Yeah, definitely. I think stylist uh, requires less cutting, but I've only done a little bit of research into it, so I don't know that for certain. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think that if you are a creative person... And you're good with people. I think that's a great career path for a lot of people, actually. And Columbus has a lot of good, a lot of good great places. Schools. Yes. So if you're Aveda. listening from Columbus, Ohio State has its own barber school. I was thinking about going to that. Um, that's wonderful. I can totally see you there. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Yeah. <clears throat> so fun fact that I learned from my barber: hmm. uh, the beard cast. I should have picked that one. That's probably definitely taken. Uh, I'm sure. But uh, you cannot shave somebody with a straight blade uh, without specifically a barber's license. Okay. Like, not even a stylist license. Like, it has to be a barber's license. You know, and I think I that's valid. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if that's something archaic, though, because, like, let's be real. Have you all seen what, what stylists have? They've got razors that they're cutting your hair with, too. That's true. But the thing about it is it's your face. Yeah. Well, true. Right up on your face. Yeah. Whereas like, hair, you can kind of pull out. And like, I'm shit, sure, I'm sure the degree requirements oh. are different. I just wonder if it's archaic. It's, I wonder it if it's just be. like it used to be. There was only barbers, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense to me, honestly. Yeah. So <laughs> you should become a barber. Become a yeah. barber. Be a you barber. Like a if barber. you're thinking about being a lawyer, be a barber. Be a barber. <laughs> no, actually, no. If you're a lawyer, you should not become a barber because you're going to be trying to argue with people about what their hair should look like, and that's not cool. <laughs> Be a lawyer. So be a lawyer <laughs> or a barber. <laughs> Those are your choices in life. Absolutely. And I think I think we've learned a lot. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. Um, we uh, just wanna just wanna go back through some things. Um, we uh, we reviewed the Ophelia Hoppy Wheat Ale today. Um, I wanna say goodbye to our guest, Liz. Where can people find you? What do you wanna plug? Uh, so I want to plug my organization. I work for SARNCO, the Sexual Assault Response Network of Central Ohio. I am not here in a professional capacity. I'm here in a, in a personal one. But if you are a survivor of sexual assault or if you're a family member of someone and you just need to talk to somebody, we've got a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week hotline that I just got out of working with training 40 new volunteers. Yes, um, so yes. we staff it all the time. And that number is 614-267-267. 7020. We're staffed with really lovely trained people and they're all made of gold. So that's my bit. Thank you. Yeah, if you're thinking about anything, definitely, definitely call. Mm -hmm. Like, like at the very least, talk to somebody, but but talk to a professional. We, yeah, so like we've got fifty hours of training uh, for anyone who that, who who staffs that hotline. So they're pretty knowledgeable. Um. Yeah. Fabulous. So, that, thank you for being on. Thank and you being so much. Thank you for having, a, having me. Uh, just a massive improvement. This might be our first episode. I think we should still go with yeah. the shitty I might, first episode. I might, but... Yeah, I might just do these two at the same time and then whatever our next episode is. I think that's a good idea. Um, anyway, uh, thank you again for listening. Uh, on our way out, we're going to be listening to Kesha's protest song, 
uh, for the situation she's in, she did uh, she recorded on YouTube "America the Beautiful." No, it's not. It's what Amazing it? Grace. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, which is a much much better song actually than yeah. Ama- "America the Beautiful." <laughs> sorry, America the Beautiful fans <laughs> and lawyers and, um, and MRAs. Not sorry, MRAs, but and four string brewing company again. I'm very sorry, <laughs> but not really. Not terribly sorry, but a little bit. Hey. Uh, anyway, uh, as we're fading out, we're going to be listening to that and. Um, Anyway, uh, I hope you listen to us next time. And good night, everyone, or good afternoon. Bye. When you listen to this. Bye bye. Goodbye. The sound they had saved our age, like me. Cause I, I was. Was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now.